Welcome everybody to the one o'clock session of our third annual New Mexico DELT virtual conference. My name is Jamie Trujillo and I am moderating for the wonderful David Disco of Admentum and he is going to be talking to us about practical examples of customizing Play-Doh courses to support early stage learners in career-oriented courses. And uh, before we get started, um, I just want to make sure that everybody, if this is the first uh, session that you've attended today, make sure that you go to signin.nmdelt.org to log in your attendance. It's a very simple Google form. It just takes a few seconds. Uh, just make sure that you log in your attendance so that you can get credit for viewing this webinar live. This will be recorded so you can watch it later. So if you are watching this uh, recorded version later, please disregard this message. But right now, as it is live, please make sure to sign in. And with that, I will turn it over to David. Well, thank you very much, Jamie. Good afternoon, everybody. Again, my name is David, and if I haven't met you, uh, I've met a lot of people in the state. I work in there a lot. Uh, just give you a little quick snapshot of who I am and what I do with the company. I work for Edmentum, and in that position, I am education coach and consultant. I have worked with your installations since it was a pilot stage program uh, several years ago. And I have kind of worked along with you and, you know, help you grow and really use this in a wonderful way. We always hold the state of New Mexico up on how they work with students in the high school equivalency area and the job readiness area. And we also, just for your information, we use uh, this statewide in correctional environments in the state of New Mexico as well. So it's used quite a bit all over the state. So wanted to just jump in here, and this is not going to be like a, you know, hey, here's everything to know about uh, the Play-Doh Admentum system. But what I'm going to focus on, as Jamie mentioned, is give you a couple of practical examples that I've run into in the past couple of years when it comes to transitioning students either from high school equivalency programs into job training programs or just standalone, you know, job readiness programs. And we'll give you a couple of things about how I've helped people and, and some things about how I've seen them use this. And we're going to, you know, I want you to think about this as I'm getting started is if you have any specific questions about, hey, I've got some students who want to do this. And they've asked me, you know, how do I train for this career? What can we do? I'm going to have time at the very end that we can have a little back and forth about this and we can come up with some ideas on this. So let me start off, give you a quick overview of where I am in the system. I'm pushing out my screen to everyone. And in this, <clears throat> I'm going to go in and I'm looking at this as, say, an administrator or possibly a teacher. Uh, we have a slightly different view for a teacher, but this is what where I normally start. To find the material, and this is what I'm going to do is I'm going to start over the material. I hit at the menu button. I come down to course catalog. Now, what I'm doing here is I'm working with my personal test site that I have configured for our use today. Uh, I, rather than going into the New Mexico site and picking a program or two and possibly inadvertently maybe, you know, showing some students data that they don't want me to show, I feel it's safer to come over here and play with this a little bit because I may be creating things and I really don't want to kind of mess up anybody else's settings or anything. So. What I'm going to show you is some things that uh, you probably have and some other things you may not have, and I'll show you where I found those things, okay? Uh, if you look over here in the catalog, you can see that navigation, we've, you know, we can even switch on Play-Doh courses or all courses or custom courses. I'm going to switch it over to custom courses because I want to focus on some of the things that uh, I've helped people do with their custom courses. Now notice here that the first thing it says advanced reading, 
And we'll skip down a little bit here. And got some dev math and essential writing and essential reading. Those essential pieces are what I would consider to be support. They're not truly aligned with anything. You know, if you're looking for something that is has aligned to the college and career readiness standards, you know, that are derived from Common Core, get students ready, and if they take these courses and follow these sequences, they'll be ready. These are courses that I pulled together from our resources that I consider to be important to kind of keep in your back pocket. If a student struggles, if a student's not ready, if a student is, say, in the case of this advanced reading strategies, the student is getting down towards the end uh, in, of readiness towards going to take their high school equivalency exam, and at the same time, they're starting a job training program or an apprentice program, and they come to you and say, look, you know, I'm really close to finishing. I like this idea that I can go in and I'm working towards that apprenticeship already, and they know I'm going to get my high school equivalency, but some of the reading is really hard, or some of the math is really, you know, difficult for me. You can help them with that. You're not going to give them a whole giant course. You're just going to give them bits and pieces. So what we've done here with advanced reading strategies, and I'll just click on that to open it up, is to come up here and say, all right, let's say maybe the student needs help in just their reading skills, okay? So if you come over here and open up the reading skills piece, this is maybe a little more advanced. It doesn't quite align with, say, GED or high set, but it is really good material. There's lots of things that we have in our library because we've been around for a while as a company. We don't really like to throw anything away unless we really have to. So what we do is we kind of archive it. And you folks have access to the archive area. I have access to it. And you can go into that archive. We call that archive titles, by the way. And if you've ever been there, that's really what that titles area is. It's things that don't necessarily align with anything, but they're there if you need them. So with this one, maybe the student's struggling with some of the vocabulary and they need help on you know, just how to understand words they may not be totally familiar with other than say just going and looking up in the dictionary because sometimes that doesn't work. So I would rather go in and give the students some lesson material that's saying, oh, if you don't understand the word, go look it up in the dictionary. I'd rather give them the tools where they can personally understand those words so they don't have to go look it up. I can break down those words. I can kind of understand and tease out because of maybe the situation where the word's placed in a sentence. I can kind of figure out what that word means. So this is kind of the things we do. This is more strategy oriented, okay? Doing your best on a reading test. What would I need to do? If I'm taking a reading test, how would I need to do that? So these are the kind of things that I could do and give to the student to help them. Now, when I talk about giving it to them, if you're familiar with the, the system, we want to go in and usually we want to just go in and assign this to students. But with this, I don't really want to assign them the whole thing. I want to assign them bits and pieces of it. So you, you kind of see what I'm saying there. If I gave them everything, said, okay, here's a whole course. They probably don't need the whole course. They might need just this first section that talks about reading strategies, okay? So how would I do that? Well, this is where I'm gonna, you know, violate the principles of what I usually follow when I do a normal training is I do things in a very logical, methodical manner. I don't jump around a lot because sometimes when you jump around, you don't, you know, give people a good sequence in their head. But in this case, I need to because 
I really want to focus on giving the student a little bit of help. Not the whole thing, just a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump out of this area for just a minute and I'm going to come over here to Flex Assignment. Now, if you've used Flex Assignment, this is going to be real familiar to you. But if you haven't used it, the first thing I need to do is create one of these classes. And a class is nothing more than just a grouping of students. So I'm going to call this reading help. And my name is going to appear here. And you can add other instructors if you want to. And then I can go in and type in some learner names. Now I had used codes on my test site, so I'm just going to go do the thing called HSE and assemble my class. And here's the thing, I just hit create flex class. So I just put those students in there. Now notice it's right here, reading help. I come in, hit new assignment. So we call the class reading help. I'm just gonna call this basics one, okay? Start date, today's date, due date, I'm gonna leave that blank. But if the student really needed to get it done quickly and I wanted to hold them to that due date, I could put a due date in here. Instructions go there. Now, here's the interesting part. Normally, when I have a group of students and I assign something to the group, it's automatic. It just says, okay, I've got four people, like in this case here, I make assignment, all four get, gets that assignment. But here, if number 19 needs that assignment and only 19 needs that assignment, I can do that. So I come down here and now I have to find my material. And this is where I need to go over to this item called custom course. And it's going to redraw this piece over here. And in this window, I'm going to be able to see that custom course. I don't want to leave it on Plato courses because I'm not going to find it. This is what I would consider to be a custom course. Okay. So if I come over here, and look for that course, and that's Advanced Reading Strategies, version two. There's my reading strategy. If I want to do the whole thing, all I have to do is click, hold the mouse button down, drag it over, and I drop it on the little briefcase icon. And you see how it's gray right there? If I move it up there, it's green. I just drop it, and I've got all five of those pieces there. Now, here's my choice. If I want to give that student all five pieces, great, I'm almost done. But what if I say, you know, I don't want them to do that. I want them to do those four pieces, or even one or two then all I have to do is get rid of those things that I don't want. And if I want to make this look like the rest of our Plato courses, I can come up here and add a pretest and add a post-test. Now, what I've done is I've created a pretest that fits just those four pieces I have on the screen and a post-test that covers those four pieces. And I hit create assignment. Now, you'll notice I've got where it says reading help, I've got four students, one assignment. If I click on where it says assignment, I can see I've got basics one. I open that up, and I can see number 19 has six things here. They've got the four pieces or modules that I've assigned, and they've got a pretest and a post test. If I want to see, their progress on this, all I have to do is click, 
There's the pretest. It will tell me when they started it, the time that they spent on it, and their score. And if I don't like that, if I want them to redo it, all I have to do is hit edit, and I can make them restart it. We do the same thing with each of the modules. Okay. So if I wanted them to redo the mastery test, I can edit it and have them restart it. Same thing for that post test. So it's a quick way to go in and build that with your students. Now, there is where it says take a tour right up here. It will walk you through all those steps. And again, I'm over here in Flex Assignment. So pretty quickly, I can intervene with a student. Now, hopefully somebody's sitting out there going, yeah, that would work for that special case where a student's struggling, like you said, and you know they need help. But the light bulb should be going off right about now that says, you know, if my students are doing their regular high school equivalency work or any other work that they're struggling with and they need extra help, I can do a quick intervention lesson. That's the reason that this feature was designed and it's really helpful. So I'm gonna come back to my setup here. We'll come back to the catalog. So this is why I don't like jumping around too much because jumping around. The other thing <coughs> that I hear from folks is this. I have students who come in with the best intentions. They want to get their high school equivalency. And at the same time, they want to work on, say, a career goal focus. They want to do everything at once. Some of your students may be like that. And honestly, that's a very admirable aspiration because somebody has realized that they, know they want to alter their life path. They want to change their trajectory. They want to do something different. So because of that, we can put them in things like a certified nursing assistant. We can put them in other things. We can put them in a variety of pieces. And we can give them that work. And sometimes, you know, you might want to rely on our assessment piece. And so we want to give them an assessment, figure out where their reading level is. And if their reading level is too low, we know we can't put them in their target material, so we have to disappoint them and say, you know, it, I, really, I know you really want to do this course, but you're not ready for it. So you have to trust me, you have to do this other work, then you can do this other stuff. That's not easy to say, and it's not easy for them to hear. And sometimes students get frustrated and they might leave. So the idea is we want to retain our students and we want to help them be successful at the same time. Because honestly, if we say, okay, here's the target material and they get in there and they don't understand it, they're going to leave anyway. So you're kind of in a catch 22. So what I've done with a client in Texas, is I worked with them to develop what we call level three, four, and five for some of our target material. Now with that, um, we focused on certified nurse aid material and the CompTIA. And we're gonna talk about what all those terms mean if you're not familiar here. But what we've done, and I'll, I'll just open up this one here. And this is Certified Nurse Aid Level 3. Now, why is it called Level 3? We talked about how we would code these. So they knew what level they supported. And at the same time, they didn't want to go in and make the student aware that they were working on extra material that maybe somebody else wasn't. So we didn't want to call it 
you know, deep remediation or, you know, put a grade level on it. We wanted to go in and kind of work through that. So what we did here was we came full the course certified nurse aid into our customizer. And I'll give you a little snapshot of the customizer in a few minutes. And I created, let me collapse all these units and see what we've got here. We created a thing, a, a naming convention called uh, unit zero. And unit zero means that this is a readiness unit that we want the student to do. The units that have numbers on them come from the regular course. So if you look at our regular production course of certified nurse aid, semester A, you're gonna see unit one, two, three, and four. What I've done is gone in and created these extra unit zero, which are, this one is reading readiness number one, readiness two, three, and four. The reason for labeling it level three is these students have been assessed by the school to be at NRS level three, which is fairly low, and it starts them with a unit zero with assignments that look like this. What are pronouns? What are possessive pronouns? Tense of irregular verbs, comparisons, and so on. Then, once they do that, they can try unit number one in the target course that they're working on. And the first thing is communication and healthcare. Now, is just this material gonna get them totally ready for reading this piece on their own? Could I just give them that first piece of unit zero and then give them this? The answer is probably not, but it gives the student hopefully enough readiness to try this material. And the coaching that the students get is, okay, here's what you need to do. You need to come in here and start at the beginning, do this first, and it's a unit on basic reading. If you feel comfortable with this after you finish, then jump in here to unit number one and try it. If you start doing unit number one and it seems a little too difficult for you, stop working on unit number one, go to unit number two, unit, second part of unit zero, which is reading readiness two, and then do that one, and then circle back to this. What they've been telling me, we've been using this since uh, November, is that most students are very eager, even those students who were frustrated before. And what were they were frustrated in? They were frustrated in themselves. They were frustrated in the process that they couldn't jump in and do this right away. They, you know, were frustrated with the school a little bit because they kept saying, no, you can't have this until you do this kind of thing. So they, the, you're giving the students some options. They have a way to control their destiny. And they can control it within their flow of the coursework. So if they start working through this target piece that's unit labeled unit one, two, and so on, and they struggle, they can come back and do their own fill in the gaps. So far, they said it's been working fairly well. They still have some students who are you know, struggling, struggling, and they're working with them in a very conservative manner. But this is a, an interesting way to come in and do that intervention. Now, some people do the intervention through assessments where they give the students, say, AccuSess, figure out where their reading gaps are, go in and fill in gaps with that piece. And then, but then the student has to go through this entire learning path in AccuSess and then do this other piece. 
and that's frustrating me. So it's a little bit different approach. I don't know if it would work for everybody. I think it takes a really good team to make this kind of thing work where the coaches and the instructional staff are on board. They know how to coach the students around this. The students need to be responsible for their own learning, not just, okay, come in and teach me. They have to be very active in this process and realize when they are struggling, they need to stop and not get frustrated and do some of this built-in pieces here. So as you climb through readiness one, two, through four, you'll find out that the reading level gets a little bit higher. So the way we've done that to help them out is notice that this is level three. And if I come in here and open up level four, the way this one is constructed is notice that the first thing is not the piece of reading readiness. The first part is the direct piece. So it skips readiness one. And as they climb those levels, it has less and less support in it for basic reading. Now, hopefully, if you think about that and, and kind of turn that over, that might be a little bit of help for your students, give them a lot more freedom, give them a lot more sense of responsibility. It does make this course a bit longer. Typically, in this one, this is the second piece of it, has a little less support in it. There are 67 activities. If you look at the certified nurse aid without any of the level support in it, there's 30 something activities in it. So it does make the course a little bit longer. There's really no way to go in and tone down the language, the reading ability in here, you know, to a student's level and still have them learn the material. They do have to read it at level. But this builds in support, it weaves in support for those students. Now, how did I do this? It took a little while. I'm going to be real upfront with you. It wasn't something that I could just sit down and do in 10, 15 minutes and pick up the phone and tell them, hey, it's ready. Go in and use it. What I did was I went in to the custom course builder, create a custom course. I found my target course here. And I'll just zoom down here and make everybody dizzy with my long list of courses. And I took the course here, semester A, and I brought over the pieces and dropped them over and recreated the course over here. Notice that I did not bring over the syllabus. I did that deliberately. The reason I did not bring over the syllabus is because the syllabus will not update as I go in and build this. So if a student looked at the syllabus and then looked at the course, they go, wait a minute, the syllabus didn't say anything about reading here. Why is all this stuff, reading stuff in here? So that's something that has to be communicated to the student and they need to understand. So I deliberately left that out. Now to create an, a unit in here, what I do is come to the top level, add a new unit folder, and notice it drops it down at the bottom. That's kind of the default. So the first thing I'm gonna do is drag it to the position I want it. And I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna double click on it and I call it unit zero, okay? And I call it zero because I want everybody to be really clear 
that this is not part of the sequence. I don't want to renumber all of these units. I want to make sure that unit one in my custom course that talks about communication, teamwork, and diversity is clearly labeled unit one the same way it's labeled in the other courses. So that way I can pull data later if I need to, to compare. So now I come in here and I call it reading readiness one. All right, so I've got this and it is totally empty right now. So what I need to do is shift this to titles or custom courses, either one. And let's go to titles. And there's my advanced reading strategies. But I don't want advanced because these students are pretty low. So maybe I want to go to essential reading skills. I got part one, part two. And some of these are important for them to learn and some of these things are not. So then I go in and take over and drag individual components over here as I need them. And what I did, and I'm just doing this randomly now, but when I was actually making this, I looked at the NRS levels because the school I was working with here is very strict about using that uh, nomenclature and looked at what they considered to be reading level at NRS three, four, and five and built this according to that to match that. Your facilities may not be that strict. You may have a different approach, but this is what you can do. So I can come down here and I could pull pieces and parts here. And when I'm satisfied with what this looks like, and I don't have to stick to one piece, I can do multiple pieces. But when I'm ready to go, I can come up here and add a pretest and add a post test. And now my unit zero looks pretty much like just the regular units in Play-Doh. Students really don't know that I built this for them. See how that works. And then if I would come up here and say, add an end of semester test, it's gonna pull material in there to reinforce with those students that yes, they need to have that reading readiness there. Okay, so that's an interesting way to come in. And, you know, build this support for students into anything. Now I'm using this as a somewhat straightforward example. If I needed to go in and add math to this, I could. If I needed to add writing skills, I could as well. I felt this was a good example to show you because it's certified nursing assistant, which is one of the things that's most popular for students to go after. And number two, if the students aren't reading well, then they're going to struggle a lot with the terminology and some of the words, and they need that support. The need for math is important here, but it's not deeply critical. That can be picked up with other things. Okay. So basically what you would do is continue on in that process and intersperse these units with other things as well. Now, here's something else, and this is the choice that I gave these folks, is if I wanted to, instead of creating a separate unit, I could have embedded these into this piece here, but I did not. And we went through the pluses and minuses of, of why I should or shouldn't. The one way that I think would be important 
to include it is it makes it a little more mandatory that the student do it. The problem is with making it mandatory is that it's gonna, it's, it's gonna really make the unit long and it's gonna make each of these post tests long and it may tend to discourage the student and it would tend to maybe drive down their scores. So from a data perspective, I think it's better from a student motivation perspective, it's better as long as it's framed to the student and explained what's going on here with them, rather than just saying, okay, here's your course, go do it, which we can kind of do with some of the other things. They all need a little bit of explanation, but this one really requires that explanation, saying, hey, this is what's going to happen. If you struggle, stop with the struggle and go back and do these other pieces. A little bit harder to pick that out when it's embedded. The other thing is, uh, from an analysis perspective, because this group I was working with was, is very data-driven, uh, they handle a lot of grants, and they're very responsible about that. So this way, they, it's easy to pull out scores on the post-test that are just focused on the target material and aren't associated with these other things. And that way they can com begin comparing students who are in this remedial type material versus students who are maybe not as remedial or maybe not remedial at all. So there's some interesting things that do this. We talked about this extensively, and this is the, the plan that we came up with. You may come up with a completely different plan, but that's kind of what we're doing here with this. So I'm gonna stop right here. I'm, I'm getting close to the time. I ran a little bit longer than I expected, but um, this is the kind of thing that you can do to help those students. So I'm curious, does anybody have any questions or ideas or anything like that? So just so you know, um, if you if you want to, I, I believe you can unmute yourself, right? David, they can unmute themselves? Uh, yes, I did not mute anybody. Everybody's been really good about muting themselves when they came in. So you can unmute yourself if you want, or you can uh, type in the chat either way. <laughs> And I know this is a little, you know, kind of off the wall topic a little bit in some ways, but I wanted to put this out there to get you folks thinking about this, particularly as we start moving students into these focal job training ideas. Absolutely. And, and you know, career readiness and workforce training is just um, it, not just because of the WIOA mandates, but because mm -hmm. that is what we want for our students. So, um, okay, so Jervis asked in the chat, so is mm -hmm. this is just prep for a career? That's his question. Correct, yes. Uh, and it could be prep for a career. It could be, I mean, you could weave this into just about anything mm -hmm. that they were interested in. So maybe um, in one of the, in the earlier session I ran, uh, I had a thing about a career explorations course. If you wanted to weave this into that course, you certainly could. I mean, you're not limited to what type of course it could be woven into. Um, that's the great thing in, about the flexibility of our system is that it can go in and it has this flexibility to do this. And I want to actually totally ditto that. It, the amazing thing about the Admentum software is just how customizable it is. You saw how David was customizing this uh, courseware. It's, it's, there, there really is no limit as to how much or how little you put in each course. You can uh, choose exactly what to have for pre and post testing. Um, it, it, it does take a little bit of work on the front end and, you know, it's not going to be any different than trying to create lesson planning for your in-person classes, but it, it's, it's such great quality because of that customization. And, you know, with regards to what David was saying about um, having a career exploration course or a career readiness course, the, the idea of integrated curriculum where you have, um, you have the skills that the students will need in order to pass the high school equivalency exam within the content of career readiness, that is ideal 
because they're getting kind of like a, an all-inclusive Mm -hmm. educational experience with that and it doesn't have to be just one career pathway it could be several if you want it to right and the group that i've, I've worked with uh, this on here in texas uh introduced me to a new term and i love it and it's called career braiding okay. and they said that and i went wow that actually is very cool because if you think about, you know, braiding hair or anything like that, I mean, you're taking different strands and you're weaving it very carefully together and it comes out in this perfect path to what you want. And really this is, I mean, this is our goal is we want to truly help these students, not just say, okay, here's your high school equivalency, go out and do good because that's not quite enough. Right. Very much agreed. I don't know if we have any other feedback. There's nothing else in the chat. Mm -hmm. And if uh, anybody, you know, thinks about this, because this is something to think about here a little bit, and it, or if somebody watches or listens to the recording later on, if you want to reach out and contact me, uh, if you don't know my email or anything like that, you can contact the DELT folks and they can hook you up with that and I'm very open to talking to people and I do a lot of visits to the state and I'm more than happy to come in and, and talk to smaller larger groups about this in a deeper way. Absolutely and, and David is really great about offering that um, detailed and individualized support for Edmentum. It, it's really really great that we have that partnership and uh, you can just with regard to getting the support, if you go to www.nmdelt.org, if you go to the support section or the connect with us section, you could go to meet the team. It will have all of our emails on there. So you can uh, contact any one of us. We could get you in touch with David or you can contact David directly. Um, and then unless anybody else has anything to say, I just had a couple of uh, final announcements before we end our webinar. Did you have anything, David? No, I, I think I'm ha about done here. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so the only thing that I wanted to just announce, if you've, if you've been to sessions already today, you've probably heard it, but if this is your first session, um, there will be an ELA Tech Talk next Wednesday, April 17th at 1230 till one, um, and our wonderful Monse and Don will be providing that webinar. The, uh, tie, the topic of the webinar is practice and conclusion, tech strategies that reinforce English learning. So please look for a flyer very soon, probably on Monday, uh, with, the, with the login information for that. We will also be having an AE Tech Talk coming up, though that has not quite uh, been figured out. So we will get you that information as soon as we have it. So thank you all so much for attending. We hope you've been enjoying your day today and uh, we hope that you continue seeking out our support. That is what we are here for. And thank you, David, for a wonderful presentation. Oh, and, and thank you folks. I really appreciate working with you. We appreciate it as well. Thank, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.